What is a true guru, guide, or true teacher? Question mark. As we see that if all the great masters, great teachers were in the same room together, there would be no conflict. They automatically realize through vibration of consciousness that all the other great masters, although teaching from a unique vantage or viewpoint, share the same message, which is unity consciousness or wholeness or sovereignty or total freedom. So, it's important to note that teachers, by design, offer enlightenment through the process of resistance. I know this sounds strange, but just like the way light reflects off of objects and reveals the nature or quality of the object to us, teachers do the same. So, a good example is Everyone's sort of noticed those, those moments when the light is shining in just the right way and you see all these little dust particles in the air. And you go, oh, that's really neat. That's interesting, the way they move, the way they float, their qualities. Um, if you were to look in the same exact location from a different viewpoint where the light is not revealing the dust, the dust is not there. Well, actually, the dust is always there. The point is, is that it's the viewpoint, the vantage of light bouncing off of or reflecting off the little dust that reveals the dust to us. So a teacher is like this. They, they offer enlightenment by resistance. And they embody a certain viewpoint or a certain amount of knowledge in which they can share with others and that sharing is the reflection. And so when we really understand a, a teacher or a guide, we realize that they are actually there for us to transcend. They're sort of a, a barrier of knowledge or a barrier of resistance designed for each person to learn and then expand beyond. So. It's important to note that by definition in Sanskrit, a guru, a true guru, is called the dispeller of darkness. And the reason that is, is because a true teacher, a true guide, a true guru has, has learned such a holistic body of knowledge that they've realized that there is no power in having an authority figure over them because they're always transcending. And there's no power in having a slave beneath them because this is debasing their soul, dropping them back into ego consciousness. So a true benevolent teacher really offers enlightenment through resistance, but without, without the, the idea of anything in return they're already whole, they're already sovereign, they already claim their own power, and so there's, they don't need any reverence, really, from their student. We see this a lot in Buddhist teachings. The Zen, the Zen way is, is, is a koan, it's a riddle. That riddle is a resistance to your current reality. When you solve that riddle, your current reality changes. Your paradigm shifts. You've transcended the resistance and embodied a new reality. So the true dispeller of darkness is one of benevolence, but naturally designed as nature to offer some small resistance in which to ask the pupil to do some work, to do some inner reflection, to do some inner work to make their own revelation or their own epiphany occur.